Okay, yeah, welcome uh, members of council, staff, and anybody watching from the public. After, since uh, COVID-19 started, we had 13 remote meetings uh, through Zoom, so it's nice to be back uh, together in the council chambers. We have moved our council meetings to the Charland Recre Recreation Centre in the Tartan Hall. So it's nice to have all our council members and staff back in uh, in house with the uh, six feet uh, distancing, but it's nice to see everyone in public. I have a motion moved by Stephanie Jaworski, second by Lyle Warden, be resolved that the council meeting of the township of Selkland Gary now be open at 7.14 p.m. Heard the motion, all in favor? Motion's carried. Anybody in the public out there, the reason why we started at 7.14, we were delayed after a meeting in regards to our committee of adjustments, which ran a little bit longer, so we apologize. I can ask everyone to please stand for the playing of our national anthem. Thank you. I have a motion moved by Martin Lang, second by Sam McInnell, be resolved that the Council of the Township of Salkland Gary approve the agenda. Is there any additions to the agenda, Madam Clerk? Yes, uh, moving from, for information only, is item one, um, two, and three. Uh, it will become the letter for the thank you to William South Barrow will be item three under other business. The letter requesting for support for sponsorship of the commercial storefront will be item four under other business. And the resolution regarding cannabis production will be item five under other business. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, additions to the agenda from members of council? Not seeing none, so the motion will be as amended. All in favor? Motion is carried, thank you. Any declaration of pecuniary interest? Not seeing none. Uh, approval of the minutes of the previous meeting minutes of September the 8th. I have a motion moved by Sam McAnnell, second by Stephanie Jaworski, be resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting of Council of the Township of Selkland Gary held on September the 8th, 2020, including the closed session minutes, be adopted. Madam Clerk, you had an addition to the. Uh, yes, there does need to be an amendment to resolution 268 2020. There was a typo. It should have read that the award was being made for 23,720. So that, so we'll amend the minutes accordingly. Okay, thank you. So the motion would be as amended, all in favor? Motion's carried, thank you. I have a motion moved by Martin Lang, second by Sam McAnnell, be resolved that the minutes of the public meeting of council of the Township of Selkland Gary held on September 8, 2020, be adopted as circulated. Heard the motion, all in favor? Motion's carried. No presentations or delegations this evening. Okay, we'll move to uh, staff reports. Transfer Schlomberg Park Reserve in our RCA. Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This transfer was brought up at budget time 2020, so back in January. It, uh, was something that kind of got pushed aside with our, our current circumstances. So as you can see on the staff report on page 13 of 72, it's just requesting, the IRCA is requesting $25,000, which we have presently in reserve to be transferred to them. Um, attached, you'll see the report or the question on page 15 and 16, which was the request. Uh, 
impact on budget would be negligible as it's just a small amount of interest uh, compared to our overall reserves and cash position. So I'll, I'll leave it for council for discussion and I'm here if you require any further questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Warden. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, is this something that we've done in the past? I, yes. I just, okay, thank you. I don't know if we've moved this particular reserve, but we have given back um, surpluses in the past. So right. it's, not, it's not atypical, but we haven't moved this particular reserve. Okay, any other questions from member of council? Not hearing none, I have a motion moved by Stephanie Jaworski, seconded by Lyle Worden, be resolved that staff report 133-2020 be received and that the council of the corporation of the township of Soko and Gary approve the transfer from the Swampburg Park reserves of 25,000 to the Raisin Region Conservation Authority. With the motion, all in favor? Motion's carried. Number two is the Martintown Cenotaph Committee Future Care and Maintenance Request. Mr. McDonald. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that's on page 17 of 72. Um, on that page, you can see a nice little heat map. That's compliments of uh, our summer student, Zane Bougie, who taught us how to do that. So we have a, um, uh, an outline how to do that. It just shows the support, not so much to this conversation, but just something nice that comes from the students. Um, they have been successful in fundraising to date. I believe it was always the intention of council and administration that once the cenotaph is, uh, money has been raised and the, the um, memorial has been erected, that it would become uh, the township's responsibility on township land. And they're just requesting a formal resolution saying as much. Um, obviously, there'd be slight slight costs to maintain it, but nothing more than whippersnipping that we already kind of do. It's just one more thing. We're already there. Uh, if you require further information, I'm available, but I'll leave it to the council to discuss. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from members of council? Councillor Jaworski. Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I just wanted to say that it's very impressive how quickly this committee is pulling themselves together and how much money that they've already raised up to this point. I think that's you know really laudable and uh, certainly I, I support this uh, this particular report recommendation. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. And may I, if I may, can I draw your attention to uh, page 18 of 72? So I, I found it interesting that this group is not only knocking on local doors, but they're also reaching out to former Martin Town uh, citizens and residents. They have people in Alberta and BC who have also donated, which is, is fun to see. And uh, as Councillor Jaworski said, applaudable for their efforts. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments from members of council? Not seeing none, I have a motion moved by Stephanie Jaworski, second by Sam McDonnell, to resolve that staff report 134-2020 be received and that the council of the corporation of the township of Soko and Gary confirm that the township will assume responsibility for the care and maintenance of the Martintown Cenotaph upon the disbandment of the Martintown Cenotaph Committee. For the motion, all in favor? Motion is carried, thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. And we'll move to number three, municipal draft uh, signage policy, Mr. Sailing.
regarding this application at um, in advance of our last council meeting. We did receive some comments from the public that uh, did not support the request. Um, uh, you'll see in my staff report that I am not uh, recommending this to be approved. Fundamentally, I just don't believe that a subdivision is the place to have shipping containers, even if those containers can be you know, camouflaged or hidden. It's just not the type of use that I believe uh, we want to see in our subdivisions. Also, our zoning bylaw is very clear that they're only permitted in an agricultural zone for agricultural storage purposes or an industrial zone. And the reason why they're permitted in an industrial zone is that's where you're going to find parking for all of your um, uh, transports and, and um, storage for transports and things like that. Um, Council's probably aware that we don't even allow them in our commercial zones. And anybody who wants to have them in our commercial zone would have to ask for either a minor variance or a temporary use bylaw. And this is pretty common because containers are often considered to be not overly attractive um, you know, pieces or, or structures that you wanna see in the property. If council chooses not to consider my report and doesn't um, agree with refusing this, you will see that there's a bylaw attached to the report. The purpose of attaching the bylaw is council has the right to not listen to staff's recommendation and, um, and approve the application if they choose to do so. Therefore, the bylaw is prepared and ready for you to do that. If you choose to approve this, um, the resolution that's before you this evening would uh, be required to be defeated and a new resolution would be required to be drafted to respect the motion of council and council would have to list specific reasons why they're choosing to approve it and not follow with uh, staff's recommendations. Mr. Mayor, I don't think there's really anything else I can add in regards to you know, the request and, and the purpose. And so, but if there's any questions, please let me know. Okay, thank you. I think council's quite familiar with the uh, proposed containers. So is there any other questions or comments from members of council? So this, sorry, Councillor Jaworski. Thank you, through Mr. Mayor. Uh, Ms. Haley, if you could clarify, if this is not uh, passed, how long does the applicant have to remove the uh, storage containers? So through the Ontario Planning Act, a uh, notice of decision has to be issued within 15 days of today's meeting. Uh, typically, I issue those decisions within the next day or two. Then there's a 20-day appeal period from the date of notice of decision. There can be no action that occurs on site in terms of, of um, the municipality and forcing someone to remove it. If the applicant chooses to remove it within the 20 days, that's fine. We would be waiting for the 20 day appeal period to be complete and then we would provide um, time to the property owner to remove the trailer. Our bylaw officer has the flexibility to work with the applicant to come up with a reasonable time and oftentimes we're giving people anywhere from two weeks to 30 days to remove a piece of equipment like that in case they have to arrange for a truck to come along and take it away for them. Um, but not usually any more than that time frame because that's a reasonable amount of time to be able to have it removed. So it's fair to say that if this doesn't pass today, they would have approximately up to two months potentially to remove it? Between the appeal, the appeal period today. and the, uh, if it was a maximum of 30 days, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor uh, McDonnell. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, hate, uh, I hate to see us deny this, or I hate to see us deny this gentleman just based on what he's gone through, but I do agree with staff that it's not the right spot. I hope we would work with him though to give him as much time as he does need to get rid of it because it's not going to be a simple feat. It's unfortunate that it has to happen like this, I think, but it's the way it goes. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? So I'll read the motion that I have in front of me. I have a motion moved by Sam McDonnell, second by Stephanie Jaworski. Be resolved that staff report 136-2020 be received and the council refuse bylaw 58-2020, being a bylaw to amend bylaw 38-09, comprehensive zoning bylaw for the township of Southland Gary for the property legally described as lot eight, registered plan number 14M-5, also known as 6547 Sapphire Drive in the geographic township of Schlomberg, now in the township of Southland Gary, the county of Glengarry to permit the placement of a 40 foot shipping container in the rear yard of the subject property. Council of the Township of Suckling Gary confirms that they considered all oral submissions 
pertaining to this proposed amendment. We heard the motion. All in favor of the motion. Motion's approved. Thank you. Okay, number five is the Corn Creek Holdings Incorporated Zoning Bylaw Amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This property is located uh, in our settlement area of Glen Walter on the corner of Glen Walter Park Road and County Road 2. The uh, property is currently owned by the municipality and um, has been uh, a per an offer to purchase has been made by Corn Creek Holdings. The purpose of the amendment this evening is to change the zoning from an R2 zone to an R4 zone, as well as to um, reduce a variety of provisions in the zoning bylaw to permit a fourplex to be able to be located on the subject property. Uh, we had our public meeting at um, our last, uh, in advance of our last council meeting. And during that public meeting, uh, it was revealed, the site plan was revealed as well as um, all the reduction requirements. So if this application is approved this evening, the new zoning would be a residential three zone with an exception four to permit the construction of a residential fourplex, but to also reduce the front yard setback from six meters to 4.23 meters, reduce the exterior side yard setback from six to five meters, to reduce the landscape buffer strip on the north uh, west side of the subject property from three meters to 0 0.61 meters, and reduce the uh, driveway or lane width from six meters to 3.66 meters. This zoning amendment request conforms to the provincial policy statement um, as a variety of, of housing types are certainly encouraged in a, in a serviced area. It also conforms to the official plan. The official plan is also supportive of this type of residential development in our settlement areas. And um, during the public process, we did not receive any uh, comments, written or um, oral comments. All property owners were notified within 120 meters. We uh, placed an ad in the newspaper. And as we're aware at our uh, September 8th public meeting, there was no um, comments provided. So that being said, um, I'm recommending this application be approved. Uh, thank you, Mr. Saley. I'm going to declare a conflict of interest on this uh, particular item because it was, uh, I was somebody in my company was involved in the sale of the property, and I apologize for not announcing that at the beginning. I did not recognize the name. I'll ask uh, Deputy Mayor Warden to take this portion, if you would, please. Uh, with pleasure. Okay, so are there any questions of council on this uh, staff report? I believe we had a public meeting at our last council meeting. <coughs> Seeing none, Ms. Haley, I do have a question. Um, in regards to um, zoning, whenever, uh, so they're requesting the zoning to be changed to an R3. Whenever that happens, is there always an exception or is that just in regards to this one specifically because of the, the side yard setbacks required and whatnot? That's an excellent question, Mr. Deputy Mayor. If there was, you're, you're exactly right. If, if there was no other requirements to um, reduce the setbacks, then it would simply be an R3 zone. But because this property or the proposed structure couldn't fit perfectly on it, that's what creates the special exception. And that's why it's considered to be an exception because it accommodates that uh, proposed development. And being exception, whatever it's labeled, it's site specific? That's correct. Okay. No one else or no other property could ever have that same number unless they had the exact same reduced setback. All righty. So seeing none, uh, I guess I have to read this thing. <laughs> that's why I handed it off. Yeah, that's a long one too. Uh, am I able to second it or do I have to hand yeah, that off? Else. Yeah. Oh, Mark, or I'll get Sam to second it. Moved by Martin Lang, second by Sam Actonell, be it resolved that the staff report 137-2020 be received and bylaw 59-2020 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 38-09, a comprehensive zoning bylaw for the township of South Glengarry and for the property legally described as part of lot 12, registered plan number 101 being part one, a registered plan 14R6380 located in on Glen Walter Park Road in the geographic township of Schlomberg. Now in the township of South Glengarry, County of Glengarry, to rezone the subject property from residential two, R2, to residential three, exception four, R3-4, 
to permit the con construction of a residential fourplex and to reduce the front yard setback from six meters to 4.3 meters, to reduce the exterior side yard setback from six meters to five meters, to reduce the landscape buffer strip on the northwest side of the subject property from three meters to 0.61 meters, and to reduce the lane, the driveway or lane width from six meters to 3.66 meters. Be read a first, second, and third time, passed, signed, and sealed this 21st day of September 2020. Council of Township of South Langary confirms that no public comments were received on this application. Therefore, no effect on there was therefore there was no effect on the decision. Whew, all those in favor of the motion. <laughs> Thank you very much, it's passed. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. We'll move to number six, surplus lands, Glen Walter Waterfront, part five of 14R-652. Mr. McDonald. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, welcome to uh, council and uh, staff and members of the public. This is uh, another of the uh, surplus lots in the Glen Walter Waterfront area that had been declared surplus. It is the uh, agreement to uh, sell Part five and uh, consistent with the direction of council and with the uh, fee proposal as per uh, the schedule that was uh, developed by council. So this is uh, a continuing on with the process of disposing of those surplus lands. Okay, thank you. I have um, any questions or comments from members of council. It's straightforward in regards to the lands that we sold there before. I have a motion moved by Stephanie Dorsky, second by Sam McDonnell, be resolved that the staff report 138-2020 be received and that the Council of the Township of South Glengarry approve the sale of part of lot nine, concession one, Indian lands being part five on 14R-6524, part of pin number 67129-0643 to Reg and Marilyn Young as per their offer received and that bylaw 138-2020 be read a first, second, third time, passed, signed, and sealed in open council. We've got the eighth day of September, so it's the 21st day of September 2020. And furthermore, that the mayor and clerk be authorized to sign any relevant documents. You heard the motion, all in favor? Motion's carried, thank you. Okay, number seven is the landfill compactor, Mr. McDonald. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you, the uh, landfill compactor uh, staff report had been deferred from the uh, September 8th meeting. Uh, council had uh, requested some additional information on both the uh, landfill packer statistics and also on the landfill compaction efforts uh, with some supporting documentation. So I have included some additional information in this staff report. Uh, the reconditioned uh, landfill compactor that we are looking at is a uh, 1996 uh, Caterpillar and it is uh, has been fully rebuilt. It has 1,570 hours on the engine and drivetrain. And in speaking with the uh, supplier uh, given the expected life cycle, it is it is uh, very we're very confident that we will be able to uh, maintain this vehicle in our fleet for 15 years. Uh, the cost of this is $265,000. However, there is a trade-in value of $45,000 for the existing unit. Uh, we have looked at uh, reconditioning our existing unit because it is essentially of the same vintage as the one we're buying. However, there were just too many things that would have to uh, have been changed on it and the cost would have escalated. So the, the overall uh, program for the rehabilitation of the landfill packers is, is included in the staff report. We also uh, had some discussions about uh, the need of a compaction at a landfill site and I've included some, uh, some study data on that. Um, Essentially, not getting into it in great detail because uh, it is in the report, essentially a bulldozer is designed to float over ground, whereas the landfill pack with four wheels uh, with the teeth on it is designed to crush and, and compact. So the, uh, the, the both machines are necessary. The bulldozer is required so that the, the waste can be placed in the cell. 
and spread out. And then the compactor does the, uh, performs the, uh, the compaction. And then the bulldozer puts the final cover or the interim cover over the waste as is required on a weekly basis. So uh, we are uh, looking forward to uh, council's direction on this so that we can get a uh, landfill packer back in the fleet and, uh, and realize the efficiencies of uh, the operation uh, for our landfill compaction, just to, and to ensure that we uh, secure the, the optimum life cycle out of the capacity that we have at our landfill sites with this operation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mr. McDonald. Uh, Councillor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald, for the report and for the additional information. And uh, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable this now that we know a little more about it and, uh, and the information on and what the packer does and how it works. So um, I'm good to go with this now and appreciate the, the extra effort of putting more information in for us. Okay, any other questions or comments from members of council? Council McDonnell? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Uh, McDonald, as well for, for the additional information. I know I, I grabbed as much as I could on my own as well. I just have one question for you. It does say that the engine and rear axle were redone at uh, 1,570 hours ago, just do we have a rough date on how long ago that would have been? Because I think rough math would put that on our hours that we put on ours would be about seven years ago. Yeah, so and the the, uh, the landfill packer uh, that we're looking at was uh, rebuilt about three years ago and it had been purchased by a municipality uh, with a larger landfill site. And, and what they did realize was that they needed a larger packer so they traded it in on a larger model Caterpillar from Marcel Equipment. Okay, thank you. That was my only question. Okay, thank you. Councillor Radorski. Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. McDonald, for the additional information in this staff report. I'd, I'd like to, though, just to bring up uh, something I brought up the first time, the, the table that's showing the uh, fleet status that we have and the, and the year, you know, the years of service we anticipate for the rest of our fleet going forward. I just want to bring up again that I, that I look for, I really hope and look forward to having, you know, more um, fulsome review of that, the fleet. And so that, uh, you know, we can plan perhaps more proactively for uh, the next piece of equipment. You know, we do have a lot of equipment we've pushed quite well in terms of, and, you know, getting a lot of years of service, but we, I don't think we want to be caught in this position again where we'd like to be able to have a bit more time to plan ahead and replace some units. So I look forward to more information on that. Okay, hey, thank you. Any, uh, can, uh, Deputy Mayor Warden? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, Yohan, uh, thank you for your report and the extra information. I guess the only concern <laughs> that I have uh, in regards to the unit that you're proposing is it's 24 years old now, and then 15 years from now, that's 41 years of age, if my math is correct. Are we going to be able to get parts for this in 10 years or five years from now on that unit? Um, that would be my only concern. I mean, there's a 2012 model for uh, $80,000 more, but you're, you're up quite a few years from, from data manufacturing. So, you know, uh, are, you, are you confident that we'll be able to get parts for this unit uh, 10 years from now? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, I am. The uh, the engine components on this having been rebuilt, a lot of them would have been updated as well through that rebuild process. So uh, I don't see where there should be any concerns with uh, uh, securing parts in the future. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Not seeing none. I have a motion moved by Stephanie Jaworski, second by Mark Lang. Be resolved that the Council of the Township of South Queen Gary received staff report 139-2020 and that the Council approved the purchase of the Caterpillar 81, 816F land, landfill compactor from Marcelli Equipment at a cost of 265000 less the trade and allowance for the existing compactor of 45000 and furthermore that the Mayor and Kirk be authorized to sign any relevant documents. Heard the motion, all in favour? Motion's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Uh, number eight, Bray Street pumping station upgrades, water wastewater extension procurement uh, 2020. Mr. McDonald. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this project is uh, is a project that has been discussed at council uh, for a number of years. Uh, certainly, in the last couple of years, there has been discussions about moving forward with advancements to improve our infrastructure in the Glen Walter service area. We have historically had issues with the capacity at the Bray Street pumping station that has caused us to uh, bypass the system during the springtime thaw or during heavy rain events. We also have a system that at the ends of Kilkenny, at the end of Bray Street and at the end of Lawrence Street, we have dead end water and wastewater mains that is um, uh, a concern from an operational standpoint, not as much from financial, but from the operational standpoint of securing safe and potable water for our residents. Wherever you have water moving through a looping of mains, it is far more beneficial to the system to have the uh, chemicals always moving through the system as opposed to where you have dead ends, you have potential areas of settlement and our chlorine residual uh, can be a, a concern. In our system, that has not been the case um, historically because we keep our pressures very high compared to other municipal water systems. And that is uh, essentially as a result of being a mechanical system and that we don't have any elevated storage or gravity feed water. So the tender was uh, designed and uh, the work and specifications were put together by our engineers to do both the Bray Street pumping station and the looping of the Glen Walter water. Initially, it was just the water and then we looked at the wastewater and because we are looking at uh, roads in and around one of our premier parks in Glen Walter, we were looking at full reconstruction. So this is the full reconstruction of the roads where the looping will take place, Glen Walter Park Road, Bray Street, Lawrence Street and Kilkenny, along with the installation of the linear infrastructure to install uh, water and wastewater mains. The upgrades to the pumping station will bring us to a capacity issue where we will not have to uh, be concerned in the high flow periods of time. The plant will be upgraded to handle those. And that tender was issued. Um, initially, the costings were estimated back in 2018. And through um, just discussions over the past couple of years, and with the efforts to try and secure upper level government funding, we have fast forwarded to today. Uh, recently, council and uh, staff did meet at the AMO conference, the Associ Association of Municipalities of Ontario, through a virtual meeting to discuss uh, the application that we were unsuccessful with. And uh, the province has advised that uh, he, obviously times are very, very tight and uh, municipalities need to look at other non-conventional methods for funding their infrastructure needs. In this case, we've looked to Infrastructure Ontario as, a, as an option, which is a bit of a departure from South Glengarry's historical philosophy, philosophy on, uh, on debt financing. Uh, South Glengarry essentially has no debt. So at this point, the tenders have closed. We have a low bid at 1.633 million. The that's for the full project and it does include a hundred thousand dollar contingency. The budget for the project was 1.46 million, but again, as I say, that was developed over the last two years. And as we know, the construction index and the pressures on pricing and construction activities has increased uh, much more than what you would normally see in a consumer price index. So we we have reviewed the submission and it is complete and the 1.633 million will uh, will will finish the upgrades that we need to do and install the water wastewater mains and also rebuild the roads in the areas where the linear infrastructure will be placed so we're recommending um, that we proceed with this uh, the uh, General Manager of Corporate Services, the CAO, our Manager of Operations for Water and Wastewater have all been very close to this project and, and we feel that it is a necessary step in securing the future for the Township of South Glengarry for servicing in the Glen Walter area. It is one of what will be many steps that we need to consider over the next few years. So 
at this point, we're recommending that we proceed with the uh, award to Malian Construction as per their submission of 1.63 million. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll uh, entertain any questions. All right, thank you, Mr. McDonald. I will open up to members of council, Deputy Mayor Warden. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Yohan, thanks for the, the presentation. Uh, I have a couple questions. Uh, first question being, are you able to uh, delineate what the cost is for uh, replacing the pump uh, on its own and then what the cost is to do the looping? Or is that a number that you have that uh, I could, I'm just curious to know because uh, they're kind of two separate projects and they were, it makes sense to bundle them into one. Yeah. Um, that was the first question that I had. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor and through you, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the, the breakdown is, is uh, on the item list in the uh, schedule of, uh, that we, we received from the engineers. Um, the actual physical mechanical work in the, in the Bray Street pumping station would be $640,000 of that 1.6. But on top of that 640, there would be some site work, there would be top island seating, there would be the connections to the main. So um, you'd probably, it'd be a fair, fair to say that it's $800,000 for the pumping station and $800,000 for the linear infrastructure in the roads. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for that. Uh, the only other question I have is I see that uh, item number seven, uh, you want the paving completed uh, by the end of May of 2021. Um, is there a way we can push that back? Because if we have a wet spring, uh, I don't feel like those roads will have a, had enough time to settle properly. And I, I know it may be a little bit dusty for, for the spring and, and, and into the summer, but I'd like to see that push back just so we're not having a... a um, less than superior product once, once the, the you know, are we able to push that back to say, uh, say July 31st or, or even August? Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, this will always be dependent as well on the, the load restriction season and how the spring fares out. But the intention in this case and the design for this project, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, would have a base course lift of asphalt and then a top lift of asphalt. So with the full reconstruction of the roads and with ensuring that we have compaction uh, and, and uh, we would do the quality control of that compaction testing through this fall on the road base, it would be our intention to put the base lift of asphalt down uh, prior to the end of the year, weather depending, of course, and then to do the top lift in May of next year. But uh, to push it back, depending on whatever uh, whatever reasons there might be or, or the conditions weather-wise, that's simply a matter of issuing a change order. So that can be done. Okay, so this is actually for the second coat of asphalt. So I don't, I don't know, I just think that, I mean, just paving it right away doesn't make sense because it, it's gonna settle in the spring. I don't know. Um, anyways, I'll leave that in your hands. Thank you, Councillor McDonnell. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks again, you, Mr. McDonald, for your uh, for your presentation. Um, as far as the looping is concerned, for myself, I wasn't very encouraged to see the cost of it in general, and uh, I just want to. I guess this would be more a question for Mr. McDonald. Could you just kind of confirm for me where this money is going to be coming for the looping side of it? I don't mind if the water. Uh, I guess the rate users or the rate payers of the water are paying for the pumping station because they all directly benefit from it. But as far as the looping is concerned, I don't want to see that going on to the people of Glen Walter specifically. I would rather see that come onto the township and have that handled because just as far as I can see, the biggest um, benefit to this part of the project is going to be for the 15 building lots that we own, which is like asking the locals to pay for the developer fees. Right. Uh, thank you, Councillor McDonnell. Uh, the staff report was prepared that it would come from that infrastructure Ontario loan, which would be put back to uh, the system in general. But we did leave that somewhat open-ended. Uh, I, I believe I'm looking at the right spot. Um, that we would, once we get firm confirmation to go to those numbers. Uh, again, I think um, Mr. McDonald uh, mentioned upwards of 15 lots available. 
um, an estimate on those lots was about fifty thousand dollars. So um, that would bring seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars back if we sold those lots. So there might be some way how to um, have the townships. And I, this isn't a well thought out. This is just kind of I have to do some more research on it, where the township would pay for a portion of that looping to be reimbursed by the lots as they come in back to the system. Um, but as the staff report was uh, the understanding at the start was to um, take it from Industry Structure Ontario and at present to share the cost amongst all users on the Glen Walter system. But I, I hear from you that that might not be the way you in particular, but maybe council might be doing. I just want to be clear. I won't support this project if it's going back onto the users in Glen Walter because as far as I can see, we're essentially asking for the development fees for the township to create lots, which isn't fair at the end of the day. It's the entire township that's gonna benefit. And I believe the uh, the road reconstruction or at least the paving should be going out of the roads budget as opposed to the onto the ratepayers there. Okay, thank you. Just to go further with Mr. Mattanel's comments in regards to the users paying for it or the general public paying for it. The question I guess is if we borrow the money from Infra Infrastructure Ontario, and then the surplus lands that the municipality has and the other additional lots that some private owners have there. And once the sales of those lands are developed, can it, can it not re go back into paying off the infrastructure Ontario loan? I guess simply likely uh, there would have to be a mechanism to do so because we would be on a payment schedule and whether or not we sell those 15 lots within our, um, our, Five years our essential or... loan, whatever it is. Um, I can't guarantee that, but the municipality does have the financial wherewithal to absorb that, say, say temporary until we get the money back from the system. So yes, we can do it. I'll just have to, to um, give you an exact answer. I have to do a slight bit more research. Um, in looking into this, just estimates, and I know that uh, Mr. McDonald and I had tried to keep it uh, somewhat, not vague, but uh, not too specific because Right now, we can't give you precision. We might be able to give you some semblance of accuracy. Uh, a full uh, 1.7 million spread to 350 users over 20 years would range order of magnitude because it's not perfectly set in stone between 300 and $350 per year as a local area improvement charge. That's 1.7 million into those um, 350 users over 20 years at 2.03%. So it'd be in that, that range is what we're looking. If we take um, the example of uh, Councillor McDonnell and don't um, share those costs, um, especially for the looping and pot potentially the road, uh, that uh, annual local area improvement charge would be lessened significantly. So I'm kind of, I kind of rambled there, so I don't have a specific precise number for you. Um, but there is other ways of funding it than just the users for that system. As long other as- Other ways of funding it, I guess, is what you- as long as it's determined that it's not just beneficial to the water, because as you know, water systems are supposed to be self-financed. So um, as long as we don't run into that with any of our questions, and I would approach the ministry about this, uh, then then we might be able to have a few more avenues. But I'm not ready to commit to that answer 100% at this meeting because I haven't done that level of um, analysis. Okay, the question I guess I have going on with Mr. McDonnell said is if we approve this this evening, then we may not be able to do those options if the ministry says no, then the, we'd be forced to send it back to the users of that system. Is that correct? I mean, $350 per annual fee for 20 years is a lot of money for what they're paying on top of already. I certainly want to see the looping done. I've been asking for this for a number of years, as Mr. McDonald knows. But I would like to see another source of way of paying for it and sending it back on the users. Okay. Uh, then to give you a perfect answer on that, I, I would require um, some time just to contact and the research to be perfectly precise on that. Okay, just before I go to Councillor Jaworski, Mr. McDonald, if, if if this was left to the next meeting in October, would it still have time to get it done this year? Maybe not the paving, but the looping at least? And I believe it would be a challenge to... Uh to push the schedule back another two, three weeks uh, for a start. Uh, we are at the end of September. Perhaps I could provide some uh, additional comments though on the, the, the potential financing for the looping. And uh, one of the challenges 
that I think that we all recognize and have been advised with studies that we've done with the Glenn Walter system is that we simply do not have uh, enough connections to make the system as uh, financially effective as it should as it should or could be. So the more connections we can get onto the system, and I realize that that comes with other challenges with capacity issues, uh, particularly on the wastewater side. But if we if we wish to look at the vision for the future, we need more connections in Glen Walter to make it a sustainable system. And when more connections are on, then the costs are shared across a broader section, number of connections, number of homes, number of residents, number of taxpayers. So the, the, the creation of the, the potential to create 15 lots, and there could actually be more than 15, that was just a visual review of the property, is certainly, I think, a very viable option for council to, to look at making that investment uh, and, and securing the finances so that the existing rate payers don't bear the, the full cost of this infrastructure upgrade. Uh, it is essentially to provide us uh, an opportunity to grow. And um, I believe that, that that needs to be spread across, across a broader cross section. So the, the issue is securing more connections securing more capacity, investing in our infrastructure and, uh, and looking at moving towards that vision of uh, uh, further uh, growth in the Glen Walter area. And that's uh, something that I think we can, uh, we can achieve. And this is, this is a component of that. It is, uh, it is uh, uh, benefiting the operations to do the looping. And it also provides us uh, with an opportunity to realize some revenue through the sale of some surplus lands. So I, I, I know that the financing options have not been flushed out entirely. And, uh, and, and that was deliberate at this point because we were looking at borrowing the money from Infrastructure Ontario and coming back to council with options on how to finance um, the, uh, the, the payments of, those, uh, of that loan. So. I don't know if that helps entirely, but it's hopefully a little more context. Okay, thank you, Councillor Councillor Lang, and then Deputy Mayor Warden. Thank, thank you for you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. McDonald, for your report. I have a couple of comments, and I'll embed some questions in my comments. Uh, so, from similar to Councillor McDonnell and, and, and um, even Deputy Mayor Warden mentioned about how these projects, I mean, certainly to me, fundamentally, the two projects were separate in that there's the pumping station and then there's the looping. They are geographically close by, but they really are for different purposes. And I certainly don't dispute at any point the, 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 the pressing needs to do the pumping station work. Um, and certainly, I also think that, you know, the um, that benefits the entire system. And that's why, you know, there's, we've been building up a reserve on that system. And, and if I'm not mistaken, do we not have enough money in the Glen Walter reserves to cover the pumping station work? So that's my question embedded, but I'll let you answer at the end. And so that's that system. But then when we come to the looping, I'm, with all due respect, I, I don't see the benefits to the system overall being that great in finishing the looping. I really see the benefit to the completing the looping as being servicing the lots currently that the township owns. So like Councillor McDonnell says, and the Mayor Warden I think also mentioned it also, is that, that, those, um, that the cost for the looping shouldn't be borne by the, uh, the general Glen Walter user. Really in this case, it's like the township is the developer. And if it was a private developer, we would be asking them to cover the cost of the extension of the mains and the connection charges. So I think that that should be treated separately and funded separately. And as our um, treasurer alluded to, we do have, we are not in a, in a poor financial uh, situation, the township as a whole. And I think that we could cover the outlay and then you know develop a perhaps create another reserve fund where the funds of the sales of these lots could then go in to, to offset the investment that we're making but my last point is that currently the resolution says that council direct administration to borrow the funds for this project so the way i read that is we're saying we want you to borrow all the funds for this entire thing from infrastructure ontario and i certainly don't want to do that 
And like Councilor McDonnell said, I absolutely, I don't support this if we are gonna eventually put this all back on the, um, the rate payers of Glen Walter, the entire uh, 1.7 million. So I don't know if it would be at this point to modify the, um, the resolution and instead of directing council, uh, admin, admin, instead of directing administration to borrow the funds that we direct administration to come back and uh, break out how this can be uh, uh, paid for according to the benefits of you know the different categories of there's the township and then there's also the roads department budget also that needs to be taken into account for rebuilding uh, the Glen uh, Walter Park Road. I don't know if that's something that could be done or if that uh, causes more confusion. I'll go to uh, Mr. McDonald first. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So to answer your first question, yes, our reserves are, are, are sufficient to cover the pumping station. Uh, that was one of your questions. And subsequently, if we are to come back with the staff report, is it my understanding that the majority of council um, is in favor of pumping station, either reserves or, but like user pay, looping, treating it as we're the developer, like we're developing our lot so the township pay, and then the, the revenue from the sales of a lot could just go back into whatever we're paying it from because if it's to become from the reserve that we're paying that bid or the township. And then lastly, that the road is dealt with through the roads budget. So, so that is that generally the consensus of council. So when we prepare this report, it's at least to your, um, uh, your direction. Yes, I believe that's the direction of council. Nobody, is that, is that what you're looking for in regards to how to pay for the infrastructure? If he brings it back that report, is that what you're comfortable well, with? Well, I want, I think we need to pass this tonight. I think no, we no, need I, to I, award this contract and we've got the money, whether we have to take it out of reserves or we borrow the money, we've got the money to do it. I think uh, it's just, we got to figure out what's coming from where. Right, what's going to come out of the reserves, what's going to be charged back to the water uh, users and what the, is going to be the general tax base picking up the balance. Councillor Lang and then just go ahead. Just a sub subsequent to that though, Mr. McDonald, is it possible that the Ministry of Municipal Affairs comes back to us and says that we absolutely have to charge that potentially million dollars out of that out of that job to the ratepayers because it is a water system? If they deem that water, are we then obligated to, the, to charge them to the users, not to the, the users? I suppose it's possible, but I don't. It doesn't seem likely to me, just based on we we have the benefit, right? So that that to me might be an argument offhand. Um, we're not bonusing anybody, so that's that's not going to come up as a reason to stop it. Um, I, I know sometimes, uh, if, I, if I may throw uh, Mrs. Haley into this, sometimes you know the municipal um, act a little better. Does it seem like something that would that uh, the looping component where we would pay and then recover fees upon sale of a lot? Does that uh, ring any bells that you've heard of where a developer has gotten quite some? So, so I guess in that case, it's, it's unlikely, uh, but I will get back with a, a for sure answer. Sorry, to, sorry, hey. Council. Thank you, Councillor uh, Lane. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, uh, I think Mr. Warden's got it right here. I'd like to see this pass tonight. I don't like these things drawing on, and then we get into winter season when, and where you know it's going to be that much more money if we end up having to do it next year. I think it's pretty simple. You just leave the and furthermore. So you read the motion the way it is. Drop the furthermore that Council Direct Administration to borrow the funds. I just ended at you know we grant this you know. Just, that's exactly what I was just yeah, discussing. Just, just drop the furthermore and uh, it's done and we can decide how we pay it. We have the money. We're not uh, in the poorhouse here. Thanks. Okay, Deputy Mayor Warden. Uh, three minutes, Ray. Yeah, so I just wanted my comments, I guess, are just in regards to the portion that is not uh, with the looping portion. Um, I just think that it can be its, its own thing. And even with the paving, if a, if, if a developer develops a subdivision, they have to pave the road and everything. So road budget should not be affected by this project. This project, it's its sole thing. And part of the, the looping is that the road be paved. It's its own project. And then I think from what I'm gathering around the table is when we eventually sell those lots, the money raised will go to cover the cost. End of story. 
Okay, I do have a motion on the table, moved by Lyle Warden, second by Martin Lang, to be resolved that the Council receive Staff Report 140-2020, and that the Procurement 20-2020 for the upgrades to the Bray Street Pumping Station and the extension of the water and wastewater mains be awarded to Malian Excavation Limited as per their submission of $1,633,054.57 <coughs> plus HST. That's where we're scratching. I'm going to scratch out the rest of it. The rest of it is. Uh, Should leave the last. Okay. Furthermore, Mayor and Clerk be authorized to sign the documents. Yes, and furthermore, that the Mayor and Clerk be authorized to sign any relevant documents. You heard the motion. All in favor of that motion? The motion's carried. Thank you. So we'll look for a report in the future in regards to, even if it's at the budget process, but just different ideas of how we can charge that back to the. Uh, Proper uh, beneficiaries. Beneficiaries. Yeah. And Lyle and uh, Lyle and Martin can sign this initial to scratching out there, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. I'll move to other business. Note of a motion support of emancipation. Is that how you say that? Emancipation Day. Thank you. <laughs> I have no clue. Thank you. We're going to find out. Mrs. Dorsey? Your microphone. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, so I did. Uh, this came up two weeks ago in response to the letter from Chatham Kent uh, asking for support for uh, declaring uh, August 1st as Emancipation Day. And uh, our clerk, Kayla McDonald, is kind enough to. Uh, Right, a motion for today. So um, I won't go into all the details of last time, but I, I do hope that um, my, the council, our council around the table will uh, support um, asking the federal government to uh, recognize August 1st as Emancipation Day, which is the date, um, it's the date that generally recognizes the end of slavery in uh, British North America. And I think that, you know, from an educational perspective, having a day that is so recognized uh, certainly helps to uh, recognize our history and, and how it has affected us moving forward. And uh, it also brings us in line with the fact that Ontario already recognizes August 1st as the Emancipation Day. So this is at the, so this would be at the federal level all across Canada. So I hope you support it. Thank you, Councillor Lang. I'll second it since I see it doesn't have a seconder. You're right. Any other questions or comments? I have a motion moved by Stephanie Jaworski, second by Martin Lang, whereas the Township of South Queen Gary receive a resolution from the Municipality of Chatham-Kent, attached here to in support of MP Majed Mahawas. Is that how you say it? Mahawas? Apologize for that. Private Members Bill M-36, calling for the federal government to designate August 1st Emancipation Day now, therefore, be resolved that the Council of the Township of the South Glengarry supports the resolution and directs clerk to forward a letter of support to the motion to the Right Honourable Prime Minister of Canada, MP Majid Johari and MP Eric Duncan. You heard the motion. All in favour? Motion's carried. Thank you. And second notice of motion, support of County Renfrew's motion. Mrs. Dorsey. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, the, the, when this came two weeks ago and uh, our clerk was kind enough to write the motion, I, I just think it's very important that when other uh, townships are calling for support to urge both the federal and the provincial governments on moving uh, faster with um, their support of different infrastructure projects, particularly now uh, with the, you know, the impact of COVID and how these kind of infrastructure projects can definitely help revitalize different econ you know, economies, especially in the rural areas. I think it's important to support it. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Pardon me? No, we have no seconder. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion moved by Stephanie Jaworski, second by Lyle Warden, be resolved that the Council of the Township of South Glengarry supports the County of Renfrew's motion attached hereto, calling for the Government of Ontario and Canada to fast track review of current and previous infrastructure grant applications and directs the clerk to forward a letter of support for this motion to the Right Honourable Prime Minister of Canada, 
the Honourable Premier of Ontario, the Minister of Infrastructure, MP Eric Duncan, and MPP Jim McInnell. Is the motion all in favour? Motion's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Orson. And we'll move much. to number three from uh, information purposes only, a letter of thank you from Williamstown Fair. Mr. Councillor McDonnell, is that you brought that forward? No. Councillor Dorsky. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to once again congratulate uh, the members of the Williamstown Fair, the board and all their volunteers on what an excellent job they did in pivoting and having a very uh, fun uh, alternative fair. Uh, there was lots of smiles of the folks that I saw, lots of folks posting their, you know, their fun drive-through experience on social media. So uh, I think there was over what, 600, about 600 cars that went through. So I just, I, I just wanted to acknowledge that. And again, also thank um, Councillor Lang and Councillor McDonnell and our mayor who uh, were there to greet the folks driving through and handing out cars on behalf of uh, handing out trees, trees on behalf of the <laughs> handing out cars, handing out trees on behalf of the Basin River Conservation Authority in our township. So thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much for that. Uh, number four is letter request for sponsorship of commercial storefront. Roy and Chef Resource Forum, Councillor Dorowski. Yeah, that's me again. Um, so it, it, this is a, a local animal rescue. Um, they're headquartered in Baynesville, but uh, what I wanted to do in this case is, you know, they are they're asking for um, a lot, you know, support, um, and I was hoping that perhaps we could bring this back at budget time and deal with deal with it at the same time as we deal with the other uh, requests for grants and donations. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Yes, uh, that's possible. Thank you uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the only thing with our earlier budget this year is our due date for grants and donations is November 29th. So we will hold the amount and we might have to have a subsequent meeting to approve the grant and donation. This one can come up there. It's just our, our budget meetings are November 6th and 20th, I believe are what we're set. And our, our grant application due date is November 29th. So we can include it in the budget, just we won't have a full roster of, of um, grants to consider at that time. But we, we do have in our policy an amount that we, um, we hold up to, so. What are you saying? Because we don't expect other folks to get it in by that time? Is that what you're saying? Given that the, the budget will probably be next to ready in mid-October for delivery, I, I imagine, like many people, they're functional procrastinators, and the grants will be in and around November late. Okay. But uh, we, can, we can include it in those conversations. Great. Thank you. Is there any uh, opportunity to send letters out to the ones that we normally fund on an annual basis to ask them to have their request in by the budget dates, I guess. Yes, Mr. Mayor, we can certainly do that. Um, the reason we did change our practices was because we kind of auto renewed with the, um, the usual bunch and we wanted to open it up more towards like, um, there are a lot of groups that are deserving and prior to, I think it's 2016 and 17 when we changed our policy, we didn't want to auto remind the same groups only because it favored the groups we currently had versus the groups that we may have but uh, if that's the will of council, I can certainly send uh, letters to to the ones that have traditionally asked for money. Yeah, and we can always keep additional fundings in there for additional people that will be coming forward after, but at least it'll give us some idea of where we are in respect to the ones that we supported in the past. Deputy Mayor Warden. I have two comments uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, firstly, I know the Glengarry uh, Sports Hall of Fame will be making a presentation. Staff is, uh, Hicks has been helping them. Thank you for that. Um, in regards to Roy and shares, um, this question is directed to Ms. Haley. Is there a way maybe, uh, maybe there's something for uh, them in the uh, CIP program. Maybe we could have staff reach out to them uh, and see if there's something that we could help them in the CIP area. Because I do believe we still have a budget for that and we just upgraded our, um, updated it. So is that possible? Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, it is. I'll reach out to them. Okay, thank you. And uh, we'll move to number five, resolution, cannabis production, municipality of Tweed. Councillor McDonnell. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I saw this and I thought it would be a, an interesting one for us to support, considering we've had something come through with a minor variance, I believe it was, in, uh, in uh, former Lancaster Township. Um, 
looking at this, I know I, I had the opportunity to sit in on a um, Zoom meeting with the CAO was on there, I believe, as well as the fire chief and uh, Ms. Haley. And uh, there were some very interesting points brought up through the RCMP as well as with the OPP as to not all, but some of these um, kind of backdoor uh, cannabis productions being funded by okay. sometimes uh, organized crime and other things such as that. And we, I think, have a few already in the municipality, and we probably will have more in the future. So it'd be nice to uh, see the province give us a little more control over where these are placed and, and to actually see them put some regulation on these, uh, these essentially production plants of, of uh, medical marijuana. Okay, so you're fine if we somebody brings a motion back to the next council meeting in regards to the number five? Okay, hey, thank you. You sure can, Deputy Mayor Warden. Agree, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a question for Ms. Haley. Do we currently have any licensed um, marijuana or cannabis productions going on in the municipality? Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, we do not have any licensed facilities that are done through the um, micro program. I'm missing a word to, to be formal on the name of the program. Mm -hmm. I am aware of um, a few locations where we have medical marijuana licenses issued to individuals that allows them to um, grow the product on their own property. And the Health Canada also allows them to combine the licenses and um, up to four. And so unfortunately that's really not in our control because it's about a, a medical marijuana prescription. And that's really what Councillor McDonnell was referring to. Right. If and when we have an application um, for a micro operation through Health Canada, we will be notified and we will be afforded the opportunity to provide a, a comment and a letter of support. Okay, I just, I, I've seen a, a comment on Facebook and it. Um, you know, you gotta trust, but <laughs> trust but verify. I was just curious to know if we had one because uh, the comment was that they can smell uh, cannabis from the local factory, and it was in uh, Somerset Station. So, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So we'll wait for a report to come back or a motion to come back at the next meeting. Okay, I have a motion moved by Stephanie Dworski, second by Sam McAnell, be resolved that the Council of the Township of Southland Gary accepts the items presented on the agenda as committee reports and for information purposes only. Heard the motion, all in favor? Motion's carried, thank you. And we'll move to unfinished business. Uh, Mr. McDonald, docked from Township property. We discussed that uh, earlier and we'll be discussing the remaining in closed session. Uh, fire protection ponds. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, the... Um... We'll be bringing a report back. Uh, Mr. McDonald and uh, Chief Robertson and myself met to discuss uh, the uh, fire protection ponds and, and we'll have a report at the October 5th uh, council meeting uh, to provide an update to council and uh, some uh, potential options and uh, seeking council's direction. Thank you and our municipal servicing from the city of Cornwall. We've received the cost estimates and um, we'd like to uh, convene a meeting of the steering committee to review those, uh, looking to schedule that uh, for early on next week. Okay, thank you. And the private roads development of document? Nothing on that at uh, this current time. Williamstown Garage and Fire Hall. Uh, this is tied in with the road optimization study. We have received administratively the draft on Friday of the road optimization study. Uh, we are going to be uh, having a video conference with the uh, consultants tomorrow, and they will be making a presentation to council at the October 5th council meeting. Thank you. And the LED street lights from Glen for Glenwalter? I've heard no uh, of no progress on that uh, on that file at this point. Uh, we're we're still awaiting for Cornell Electric to uh, uh, get back to us with uh, some numbers and uh, schedules and some options there. But uh, nothing. Uh, we haven't heard anything from them in the last uh, month or so. Unless uh, CAO Mills has heard anything different, I haven't. Uh, he's claiming no. So can we either make another phone call or another email to? Uh... 
I believe it's the manager of Cornell Electric, just to ask Correct. you for those numbers, if you can, please. And the Glenwalter Looping Project we discussed already. Community Services, Hamlet Signage Policy, we went through that this evening. And corporate Services, Review of Water Rates and Water Bill Design. There's no material updates, it's in the last meeting. The material update will be coming in the near future, one to two meetings. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. I have a motion moved by Martin Lang, second by Stephanie Jaworski, be resolved that the Council of the Township of Selkwin Gary convene to closed session at 8.27 p.m. to discuss the following items under Section 239 of the Municipal Act. A meeting or part of a meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered is a proposed or pending acquisition of disposition of land by the municipality or local board which would be the Glenwalter Waterfront Properties. Your motion, all in favor of the motion. Motion carried, thank you. We'll take a few minute break recess. We'll reconvene shortly. <laughs> 